Dark phrases of womanhood, of never having been a girl, half notes scattered without rhythm, no tune, distraught laughter fallen over a black girl's shoulders. <laughs> it's funny, it's hysterical, the melodylessness of her dance. Don't tell nobody, don't tell a soul. She's dancing on beer cans and shingles. This must be the spook house. Another song with no singers, lyrics, no voices, and interrupted solos, unseen performances. Are we ghouls? Children of horror? The joke? Don't tell nobody. Don't tell a soul. Are we animals? Have we gone crazy? I can't hear anything but maddening screams and soft strains of death. And you promised me, you promised me, somebody, anybody, sing a black girl song. Bring her out to know herself, to know you, but sing her rhythms of caring and struggle and hard times. Sing her song of life. She's been dead so long. Clothed in silence so long she doesn't know the sound of her own voice. Her infinite beauty. She's half notes scattered without rhythm, no tune. Sing her sighs. Sing the song of her possibilities. Sing a righteous gospel, the making of a melody. And let her be born. Let her be born and handle warmly. I'm outside Chicago, and this is for colored girls who have considered suicide, but are moving to the ends of their own rainbows. Graduation night. And I was the only virgin in the crowd. Bobby Mills, Martin, Sammy and Jerome Yates, Eddie Jones and Randy, all cousins. All the prettiest niggas in this factory town carried me out with them in a deep black Buick, smelling of Thunderbird and ladies in heat. We rambled from Camden to Mount Holly, laughing at the afternoon speeches, dangling our tassels from the rearview mirror, climbing different sort of project stairs, moving towards snapping beer cans and get it, get it, that's the way to do it, mama. All Mercer County graduated that night. Cosmetology, secretarial, pre-college, auto shop and business, all of us moving from mama to whatever was out there. That night, we raced a big old truck from the barbecue stand, trying to tell him about the party at Jackie's, where the folks that graduated last year was waiting to hit it with us. I got drunk and couldn't figure out whose hand was on my thigh. But that didn't matter, because these cousins, Martin, Randy, Eddie, Sammy, Jerome, and Bobby, was alternately my sweetheart since seventh grade. And everybody knew that I always started crying if somebody tried to take advantage of me. At Jackie's, Yolinda Mason was sticking her mouth all out. Eddie Jones was her licking stick, but I knew how to dance. And it got so hot. Vincent Ramos puked all in the punch. And Harley... Harley jumped all in Tico's face because he was leaving for the Navy in the morning. Had to kick ass so we'd remember how bad he was. Seems like Sheila and Marguerite was afraid to get their hair turning back. So they leaned up against the wall looking almost sexy. Didn't want to sweat. But me and my fellas, we was dancing. Ever since 1963, I'd won all kind of contests with the cousins at the Police Athletic League dances. And all Mercer County knew 
Any kin to Martin Yates could turn a somersault for a Smokey Robinson could get a woman excited. Mm, and we danced, doing nasty old tricks. If you stay, say, darling, stay in my corner. I've been thinking since May. Cause graduation night had to be hot And I was the only virgin in the crowd So I had to make like my hips was into some business That way Everybody thought whoever was getting it was an older man Couldn't run the streets with youngsters Martin slipped his leg around my thigh And the Dells bump stay Up and down Up and down the new Carver homes we was grown. We was finally grown. All of a sudden, you Linda went crazy. Went over to Eddie, cursing and carrying on, tearing his skin out with her fingernails. The cousins tried to hold her arms, tried to talk sense to her. Listen, bitch, Sammy went on. Bobby whispered to me I should go with him for they get to cutting, for the police arrived. We teetered silently through the parking lot, nah, -uh -uh. didn't know nothing about no party. <laughs> and then Bobby started looking at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he started looking at me real strange, like I was a woman or something. And then, he started talking real soft to me in the backseat of that old Buick. Wow, by daybreak, I just couldn't stop grinning. <laughs> so low I could. Come on, Trisana. <laughs> Woo. Cause just a kiss from you will make up in a Buick. Honey, it was wonderful. We used to do it all up in the dark, Laurie, in the corners. That's Some right. nigger sweating all over you. Oh, Lord, Charlie was good. <laughs> <laughs> I never did like the grind. Hey, well, Laurie, what other kind of dances are there? Mambo, bomba, merengue. When I was 16, I ran off to the South Bronx because I was going to meet up with Willie Colon and dance all the time. Mambo, bomba, merengue. Lori, do you speak Spanish? Hola. <laughs> My papa thought he was Puerto Rican and we would have been, except we was just regular niggers with hints of Spanish. So off I made it to this 36 hour marathon dance. Con salsa, con Ricardo, Sugar Ray on Southern Boulevard. Next door to this photography place, jammed with burial, wedding, and communion relics. Next door to La Real Ideal Genuine Spanish Barber. Up, 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 upstairs, and lots of hallway with my colored New Jersey self. Didn't know what anybody was saying. Except if dancing is proof of origin, I was a Hibarita herself. Ooh, all right. Right. All right, girl. That night and the next day, I kept right on smiling and right on stepping. If he could lead, I was ready to dance. If he couldn't lead, I caught this attitude I'd seen Rosa do and would not be bothered. I was twirling and hipping, giving much quick feet, and being a mute, cute, colored Puerto Rican, until Saturday afternoon when the disc jockey say, Sorry folks, but Willie Colon ain't gonna make it today. And all of my nigga temper come out of control. And I wouldn't dance with nobody. And I talked English loud. And I loved you more than I was mad. Uh-huh, more than 
more than... I discovered Archie Ship and subtle blues. Don't you know I wore out the magic of Juju? Heroically resisting being possessed and... Ooh, ooh, the sounds in sneaking in underage to slugs to stare at a real artiste. And every word out of Imamu's mouth was gospel. And if Jesus couldn't play a horn like Shep, was no need for colored folks to bear no cross at all. And my poems are my thank you for music. And I love you more than poem, more than Aureliano Buendia loved Macondo, more than Hector Lavo loves himself, more than the lady loves gardenias, and more than Celia loves Cuba, or Graciela loves El Son, more than the flamingos love to shooby do and do what? Love being pretty. Oye, negro, te amo más que, te amo más que when you play your flute. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Not my poems or my dance that I gave up in the street. But somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff like a kleptomaniac, working hard for getting wise stealing. This is mine. This ain't your stuff. Now why don't you put me back and let me hang out in my own self? Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff and didn't care enough to send a note home saying I was too late for my own solo conversation or two sizes too small for my own tacky skirt. Now what can anybody do with my stuff? I know it was some nigga who run off with something of no value on an open market. Did you get a dime for my thing? Hey man, where are you going with all of my stuff? This is a woman's trip and I need my stuff to ooh and ah about. Daddy, I got a mainline number from my own shit. Now why don't you put me back and let me play this duet with this silver ring in my nose? Honest to God, somebody almost ran off with all of my stuff and I didn't bring anything but the kick and the sway of it, the perfect ass for my man. And none of it is theirs. This is mine, Paula. Her own things, that's my name. Now give me my stuff. I see how you hide my laugh and how I sit with my legs open sometimes to give my crouch some sunlight, woo! And there goes my love, my toes, my chewed up fingernails. Hey, nigga, with the curls in your head, Mr. Louisiana Hot Link, I want my stuff back. I want my rhythms and my voice. Open my mouth and let me talk you out of throwing my shit in the sewer. This is some delicate leg and some mwah, whimsical kiss I got to have to give to my choice without you running off with my shit. Now you can't have me unless I give me away and I was doing all of that until you ran out on a good thing. Now who's this you left me with? Some simple bitch with a bad attitude? I want my thing. I want my arm with the hot iron scar I want my leg with the flea bite, my callous feet and my quick language back in my mouth. My fried plantains, pineapple pear juice, Sun Ra, Joseph, and Jules. I want my things, how I live them, and give me my memories, how I was when I was there. Now you can't have them or do nothing with them. Stealing my shit from me don't make it yours, it makes it stolen. Now somebody almost ran off with all of my stuff. And I was standing there, looking at myself the whole time. It wasn't a spirit who took my things, it was a man. 
whose ego walked around like Rodan's shadow. It was a man faster than my innocence, a lover, a nigger I made too much room for, almost ran off with all of my stuff. And I didn't know I'd give it up so quick. And the one running with it don't know he got it, and I'm shouting, this is mine! And he don't know he got it? My stuff is the anonymous ripped off treasure of the year. You know, somebody almost, almost got away with me in a plastic bag underneath their arm. Me dangling from a string of personal carelessness while I'm spattered with mud in the city rain. And no, I did not get a chance to take a douche. Hey, man. This is not your prerogative. I got to have me in my pocket to get around like a good woman should, to make a poem in the pot or the chicken in the dance. What I got to have, I got to have my stuff to do it to. Now, why don't you find your own thing and leave this package of me for my destiny? Because what you got to get from me I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Around five o'clock in the winter, when the sky is blue red and Dew City is getting pressed. If it's really my stuff you got, you got to give it to me. If you want it, I am the only one that can handle it. Tubes, tables, Whitewashed windows, grime wiped over once with age, legs spread anxious, eyes rolling up my thighs, metal horses gnawing in my womb, dead mice fall from my mouth. I really didn't mean to. I really didn't think I could. Just one day off. Get off of me, all this blood, bone shattered like soft ice cream cones. I couldn't have people see me pregnant. I couldn't have my friends see this dying dangling between my legs. I didn't say a thing, not a sigh or a fast scream to get those eyes off of me. Get these steel rods out of me. This hurts, this hurts me. And nobody came cause nobody knew. Once I was pregnant and shamed of myself. Orange butterflies and aqua sequins of scowns tween slight bosoms. Silk roses darting from behind her ears. The passion flower of southwest Los Angeles meander down Hoover Street. Past dark shuttered houses where women from Louisiana shell peas round about three o'clock and send their sons whistling to the store for fat back and black eyed peas. She glittered in heat and seemed to be looking for rides when she wasn't and absolutely eyed every man who wasn't white, lame or not now. She let her thigh slip from her skirt crossing the street she slowed to be examined. And she never looked back to smile or acknowledge a sincere, hey, mama, or turn to meet the eyes of someone purposely finding something to do in her direction. She was swollen, and the rhinestones etching the corners of her mouth suggested tears, fresh kisses that had done no good. She always wore her stomach out, lined with small iridescent feathers. The hairs around her navel seemed to dance. But she never let on she knew. From behind her waist was aching to be held. The pastel ivy drawn on her shoulders to be brushed with lips and fingers, smelling of honey and <sighs> Jack Daniels. <laughs> She was hot, a deliberate coquette who never did without what she wanted. She wanted to be unforgettable, a memory, a wound to any man arrogant enough to want her. She was the wrath of women in windows, finger in shades, lace curtains, camouflage and stretch marks and despair. So she glittered, honestly delighted she was desired. 
She would allow those especially scheme and tactful suitors to experience her body and spirit tearing or easily blending with theirs, and they were happy. <laughs> and lay on her lime sheets full and wet from her tongue, and she would kiss them reverently, even ankles, edges of beard. At 4.30 a.m. she rose, moving the arms and legs that trapped as she sighed, affirming the sculpted man, and made herself a bath of dark musk oil, Egyptian crystals, and Florida water to remove his smell, to wash away the glitter, to watch the butterflies melt into the suds and the rhinestones fall beneath her buttocks like smooth pebbles on a Missouri creek. Laying in water, she became herself. Ordinary, brown braided woman with big legs and full lips, regular. Seriously intending to finish her night's work, she quickly walked over to her guest straddled on her pillows and began. <laughs> You'll have to go now. I have a lot of work to do and I can't with the man around. Here your pants and there's coffee on the stove. It's been very nice, but I can't see you again. You got what you came for, didn't you? <laughs> And she would smile sincerely. And he would either mumble curses about crazy bitches or sit dumbfounded while she repeated her policy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I couldn't possibly wake up with a strange man in my bed. Why don't you go home? You got what you came for, didn't you? She could have been slapped upside the head, verbally challenged, but she never was. The ones who had fallen prey to the dazzle of hips painted with orange blossoms and the smell of magnolia-scented wrists had wanted no more than to lay between her sparkling thighs and had planned on leaving before dawn. And she was so divine, so devastatingly bizarre, the way her mouth fit round, and now she stood there a regular colored girl. Full of the same mass and livid indifference as a sister worn from sporting a would-be horn player or waiting by the window and they knew and left in a hurry. She would gather her jewels and tinsel from the tub and laugh gaily or oh, vengeful. She stored her roses by her bed and when she'd finished writing the account of her exploit in a diary embroidered with lilies and moonstones, she placed the rose behind her ear and cried herself to sleep. Without any assistance or guidance from you, I have loved you assiduously for eight months, two weeks, and a day. I've been stood up four times. I've left seven packages on your doorstep, 40 poems, two plants, and three handmade note cards. I left town so I could send them to you. You have been no help to me on my job. You call me up three o'clock in the morning on a weekday so I can drive 27 and a half miles on another side of the bay before I go to work. <laughs> charming, charming, you have been of no assistance. I want you to know that this has been an experiment to see how selfish I could be if I could really carry on to snare a possible lover. If I was capable of debasing myself for the love of another, if I could stand not being wanted when I wanted to be wanted, and I cannot. So, with no further assistance or guidance from you, I am ending this affair. This note is attached to a plant. I have been watering since the day I met you. Water it your damn self. <laughs> Ever since I realized there was someone called a colored girl, an evil woman, a bitch or a nag, I have been trying not to be that and leave bitterness in somebody else's cup. Come to somebody to love me without deep and nasty smelling skulls from lie or being left screaming in a street full of lunatics whispering, slut, bitch, bitch, nigga, get out of here with all of that. I didn't have any of that for you. 
I brought you what joy I found, and I found joy. Honest fingers round my face with dead musicians on 78s from Cuba, or live musicians on 5.LPs from Chicago, where I'd never been. And I love Willie Colon or our Senor Rigas especially, because I could make the music loud enough so there is no me but dance, and when I could dance like that, there is nothing could hurt me. But I get tired, and I have to come off of the floor. And then there's that woman who hurt you, who you left three or four times and just walk back. After you put my heart in the bottom of your shoe, you just walk back to where you hurt, and I didn't have nothing. So I went to where somebody had something for me, but he wasn't you, and I was in the bottom of your shoe on the way back from her house, so this is not a love poem, because there are only memorial albums available. And even Charlie Mingus wanted desperately to be a pimp, and I won't be able to see Eddie Palmieri for months. So this is a requiem for myself. Because I have died in a real way. Not with aqua coffins and doo-wop Cadillacs I used to joke about when I was messing around. But a real dead loving is here for you now. Because I don't know anymore how to avoid my face wet with my tears. Because I had convinced myself colored girls have no right to sorrow. And I lived and loved just that way and kept sorrow on the curb allegedly for you. But now I know I did it for myself because I could not stand it. I couldn't stand being sorry and colored at the same time. It is so redundant in the modern world. I lived with myths, and music was my old man. And I could dance a dance out of time, a dance with no partner. Just take my pills and keep right on stepping. Linger in non-English speaking arms so there was no possibility of understanding. And then you, you came saying, I am the nigger. I am the baddest motherfucker out there. And I said, oh, yes. This is who I've been waiting for. And to come with you, I had to bring everything. The dance and the terror, the dead musicians and the hope. Those scars that I had hidden with smiles and good fucking lay open. And I don't know, I don't know any more tricks. I am really colored and really sad sometimes and you hurt me more than I ever danced out of into oblivion isn't far enough to get out of this. I am ready to die now like a lily in the desert and I couldn't let you in on it cause I didn't know. Now here's what I have for you. Poems, big thighs, Little tits and so much love. Will you take it from me this one time, please? This is for you. Arsenio's stress cleared the way and makes me pure again. Please, please, this is for you. I want you to love me. Let me love you. I don't want to dance with ghosts and snuggle lovers I made up in my drunkenness. Let me love you just like I am a colored girl. I am finally being real, no longer symmetrical and impervious to pain. We deal with emotions too much. So why don't we go on ahead and be white then and make everything dry and abstract with no rhythm and no reeling for sheer sensual pleasure? Oh yes, let's go on ahead and be white while we're right in the middle of it. No use holding out, holding on to ourselves. Let's think our way out of feeling. Let's abstract ourselves, some families, and maybe tonight, I'll find a way to make myself come without you. No fingers or other objects, just thought. Which isn't spiritual evolution, cause it's empty. And godliness is ripe, is fertile. Thinking won't do me a bit of good tonight. I need someone to love me. And haven't the audacity to say, where are you? And don't know who to say it to.
I've lost it. Touch with reality. I don't know who's doing it anymore. I thought I was. But I was so stupid, I was able to be hurt, and that's not real. Not anymore. I should be immune if I'm still alive. And that's what I was discussing, how I am still alive and my dependency on other living beings for love. I survive on intimacy and tomorrow. That's all I've got going. And the music was like smack and you knew about that and still refused. My dance was not enough. It was all I had. But being alive and being a woman and being colored is a metaphysical dilemma I haven't conquered yet. Do you see the point? My spirit is too ancient to understand the separation of soul and gender. My love is too delicate to have thrown back on my face. If there's one thing I don't need, it's any more apologies. I got sorry greeting me at my front door. And you, you can keep yours because I don't know what to do with them. They don't open doors or bring the sun back, don't fetch a morning paper, and they don't make me happy. Nobody stop using my tears to wash cars because of sorry and I am simply tired of collecting. I didn't know I was so important to you. I'm going to have to throw some away. Can't get to the clothes in my closet for all of the sorry. I'm going to put a sign on the door, leave a message by the phone. If you call to say you're sorry, call somebody else. I don't use them anymore. I let sorry and didn't mean to, and how could I know about that? Take a walk down a dark and musty street in Brooklyn. I am going to do exactly what I want to, and I will not be sorry for none of it. Let a sorry soothe your soul. I'm going to soothe mine. You always inconsistent. Always doing something and then being sorry. Beating my heart to death talking about you sorry. Well, I am not going to call and I am not going to be nice. I will raise my voice and scream and holler and break things and race the engine and act a raven fool and tell all your secrets about yourself to your face. And I will list in detail each of my wonderful lovers and their ways. And I will play Oliver Lake loud. And I won't be sorry for none of it. Now, I loved you on purpose. I was open on purpose. I still crave vulnerability and close talk. And I am not even sorry about your being sorry. You can carry all of the guilt and grime you wanna. Just don't give it to me, cause I am through with apologies and I can't use another sorry next time. You should admit that you are mean and low down, trifling and no count, straight up. Instead of being sorry all the time, enjoy being yourself. There was no air. The sheets made ripples under his body like crumpled paper napkins in a summer park. And little specks of something from between his toes or the biscuits from the day before ran in the sweat that tucked the sheets into his limbs like he was an old frozen bundle of chicken. And he'd get up to make coffee, drink water, drink wine. Wished one of his friends who knew where he was would come by with some blow of shit. <laughs> Anything. There was no air. He'd see the spotlights in the alleyways downstairs moving in the air across the wall and over his face. And he'd jump under the covers and wait for an all clear or tell he could hear traffic again. There wasn't nothing wrong with him, he kept on telling Crystal. Wasn't nothing wrong with him. Any nigger want to kill Vietnamese children more than stay home and raise his own is sicker than a rabid dog. That's how their thing had been going since he got back. Crystal just got into saying what a fool nigger Bo was, always had been. Didn't he go all over uptown telling everybody the child wasn't his? Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. It was some no-counts bastard. And any old city police could come and get him if they wanted, because as soon as the shit and blood type is together, everybody would know that Crystal wasn't nothing but a no-good line whore. This after she'd been his girl since she was 13 years old, when he caught her on the stairway. 
He came home crazy as hell. He tried to get veterans benefits so he could go to school, but they kept on putting him in remedial classes because he couldn't read worth a damn. Bo accused the teachers of holding him back. Got himself a gypsy cab to drive, but the cab kept on breaking down, and the cops was always messing with him, plus not getting much bread, and Crystal got pregnant again. Bo most beat her half to death when she told him about it. She still got a scar under her left tit. Wait, cut up! Still, Crystal went on and had the baby. So now Bo Willie had two children, a little girl, Naomi Kenya, and a little boy, Kwame Bo Willie Brown. Yeah. And there was no heir. Now, how in the hell did he get in this mess anyway? Somebody went and told Crystal that Bo Willie was spending all of his money on that bartending bitch at the merry-go-round cafe. <laughs> Goddamn, Bo sat straight up in the bed, wrapped up in his sheets, looking like John the Baptist, or a huge baby with stubble and nuts. Now he had to figure how to get all of that shit out of Crystal's mind so she would let him come home. Crystal had gone on and got herself a court order, saying Bo Willie Brown had no access to his children. If he showed his face, he was subject to arrest. Shit, she'd been in his ass to marry her since she was 14 years old. Here when she's 22, she want to throw him out because he say he'll marry her. She bursts out laughing and hollering. <laughs> what you won't marry me for now, huh? So I can support your ass or come sit with you when they lock your behind up because they coming for you, you goddamn lunatic. They coming for you, and I ain't going to have nothing to do with it. I wouldn't marry your pitiful black ass for nothing. And she went to bed. Hmm. The next day, Bo came in blasted. He got to swinging chairs at Crystal, who couldn't figure out what the hell he was doing, till he got her shouting about how she was going to marry him and get some more veterans' benefits. And he could stop driving them crazy specks around while they trying to kill him for $15. Yeah, Bo was sweating something terrible beating on Crystal. And when he couldn't do no more with the table chairs, he went to get the high chair, and little Kwame was in it. So now Bo was beating Crystal with the high chair and her son. Some notion got into him to stop, and he run out. Crystal most died. That's why the police wouldn't allow Bo round where he lived. And she'd been telling the children that the daddy tried to kill her and Kwame. And he just wanted to marry her, that's all. Marry her and have a family. But the bitch was crazy. Bo Willie was sitting in his hotel room in his drawers, drinking coffee and wine in the heat of the day, spilling shit all over himself, laughing about how he was going to get Crystal to take him back. Let him be a man in the house. And she wouldn't even have to go to work no more. He got dressed all up in his ivory shirt and checkered pants to go see Crystal get this mess cleared up. Knocked on the door to Crystal's rooms. She didn't answer. He beat on the door. And Crystal and Naomi started crying again. And Bo got a shouting about how he was going to marry her. Or was she always going to be a whore? And Crystal just kept on screaming for him to just leave us alone, please. Bo broke the door down. Crystal held her children in front of her. She picked Kwame off the floor in her arms. And she kept on saying, Bo Willie Brown, you're going and get out of here. The police is going to come for you, fool. Do you want the children to see you act a fool again? Do you want Kwame to brain damage from you throwing him all around? You go on and get out. Nigga, get out of here or I'm going to kill you. Now, I swear, I'm going to kill you. He reached for Naomi and she grabbed her little girl and she stared back at him like it was a leper or something. Don't you touch my children, motherfucker. I will kill you. He jumped back all humble and apologetic. <laughs> hey, hey, look. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, look. Hey, look, I, I don't want to hurt him. I, I just want to hold him and get on my way. I just wanted to marry you and give you things. Well, what you going to give me, Bo? A broken jaw, nigga. Get out of here. He ignored Crystal's outburst. He sat down motioning for Naomi to come to him. She smiled back at her daddy. Crystal felt Naomi giving in, and she held her tighter. Naomi pushed away and ran to her daddy, crying, Daddy, Daddy, come back, Daddy. Please come back, but be nice to Mommy. 
because mommy loves you. And you gotta be nice. He set her on his knee. He played with her ribbons. They counted fingers and toes. Ever so often, he'd look over to where Crystal was standing like a statue holding Kwame. And he'd say, see there? <laughs> see there now? Now you can see. I, I, I can be a good father. <laughs> yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> come on, see the baby. Let me see my son. And she didn't move. And he coaxed her. He coaxed her. He told her she was still a hot little old thing and pretty and strong. Didn't she get right up after that little old fight they had and go back to work? Didn't she hold the house together while he was away? Bo Willie oozed kindness. And Crystal, who had known so little, let Bo Willie hold Kwame. As soon as she let the baby out of her arms, Bo Willie jumped up laughing and giggling and hooting and hollering. All right, bitch. All right, bitch. Now you're going to marry me. I ain't going to marry you, Bo. I ain't going to marry you for nothing. You're going to be in the jail for this. You're going to be under the jail. Give me back my children. You give me back my kids. He kicked a screen out the window and he held the children off the sill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now you're going to marry me. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Yes. Yes, bring him in the house. Just bring him. He looked out from the fifth story where the children were hanging out to all the people out screaming at him, and, and he started sweating again. No, come on over here. Say to all the neighbors, you're going to marry me. Come on, come on. All right, I, 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 I stood by him. I stood by him in the window with, with Naomi reaching for me and, and, and Kwame screaming, Mommy, Mommy, from the fifth story. I, I could only... Whisper! He dropped them! I was missing something. Something so important. Something promised. A laying on of hands. Fingers near my forehead. Strong. Cool. Moving. Making me whole. Sense. Pure. All the gods coming into me, laying me open to myself. I was missing something. Something promised. Something free. A laying on of hands. I know about laying on bodies. Laying out a man. Giving him all of my fleshy self and some of my pleasure. Being taken, eager, full, wet like I get sometimes. I was missing something. A laying on of hands. Not a man. Laying on. Not my mama laying, holding me tight, saying I'm always going to be her girl. Not a laying on of bosom and womb, but a laying on of hands. The holiness of myself released. I sat up one night walking the boarding house, screaming and crying the ghost of some other woman who was missing what I was missing. I wanted to jump up out of my bones and be done with myself. Leave me alone and go on in the wind. It was too much, and I fell into a numbness till the only tree I could see just picked me up in her branches and held me in the breeze, made me dawn do that silence, that chill at daybreak. The sun wrapped me up swinging rose light everywhere, and the sky laid over me like a million men. I was cold, I was burning up, I was a child and endlessly weaving garments for the moon with my tears. I found God in myself, and I loved her. I loved her fiercely. And I found God in myself. When I found God in myself and I loved her fiercely I loved her fiercely I found God in myself oh yes now and I found God in myself and I loved her Please.
sing a righteous oh, gospel. Yes, and my poems I'm are my thank you for music to make it a melody. And, and let I her love be born. Fierce 